Let's take a look at creating drawing views in Creo Parametric. I have a part open. Let's click the new button to create a drawing. And I'm not going to change the file name or the common name. Let's uncheck use default template because my default template will automatically place a bunch of views on there for me. So I'm just going to use empty with format, use my standard drawing format and click OK. It asks me which sheet I want to use. Let's start with sheet one. And it wants to know the parameter for drawn by. So let me put my name in there. Hit the enter key. And now I have my drawing started with my format, which has my zones around the sheet and a revision block and a title block. To create my first view, it has to be a general view. You'll notice that all the other icons for drawing views are grayed out because all the other different types of views are based off of another view. So you have to have a view to begin with. So you can click the general view button or if you just hold down the right mouse button, you can choose general view from the pop-up menu. And then it asks me to select a combined state. And if you do have combined states like I do, you could choose it. So I have this one that applies a cross section and also a view orientation. I'll use that one later on, but for now, I'm going to start with no combined state. And if you don't want to see this dialog box, there is a config.pro option to turn it off. So let's click OK. And now it's prompting me in the bottom of the screen to select the center point for where I want this to appear. So let's start off with this view right about over here. And it places the view on there with some initial orientation. And I don't like that. So I'm going to choose the front view and it repaints. Instead of using one of the views in the model, you could use geometry references. So for example, you could choose one surface in the model to face the top, bottom, right, left, front or back of the screen, and then some other reference to face a different direction. Or you could use angles to say, hey, let's rotate it about 30 degrees this way. And angles, uh, sometimes I will use that when I'm setting up an ISO view if it doesn't already exist in my model. So let's go back to the view names and I'm going to change the name of this view. I'm going to call it front. Oh, let's put all capitals. And let's take a look at some of the different category options that we have in here. So next up we have visible area and I'm going to use the entire view of the model here. Later on, I'll show you how to do a half view and a partial view. If you have a really long part, you could use a broken view to get rid of some boring area in there that is taking up a lot of sheet space. But for now, let's go with full view. Here we have Z clipping. And if you want to speed up the performance of a drawing, if you have a view with a lot of geometry detail behind what you're seeing, you could use Z clipping so that you're not seeing anything behind a certain reference point in the model. Let's go to scale. And the default scale that Creo Parametric chose for some reason is 0.143. Creo Parametric will take a look at the size of your model and the size of your drawing sheet and come up with a scale that will allow you to fit six views on there comfortably. But I don't like that one. Let's go and change it to a custom scale. And I'll change it to 0.25. Let's hit the apply button so it'll update. If you just click to another category, it'll actually say, hey, do you want to apply your changes or not? So that's good for the scale. Sections I will do later on. I'm going to start off with my first view with no cross section. And view states. Again, this is where you can change to using, uh, instead of no combined state, use uh, a combination state. This was an assembly. I could choose one of my pre-existing explode states or explode it right here. And here's where you can change to a simplified representation. View display. So here I have my view starting off with no hidden, and that's because I have an option set in my drawing formats and or my DTL file. And I just want to mention that for some reason, a lot of people don't change the initial setting for model views. So it'll be 
based on your environment, which is this drop down button over here. So your view will start off shaded with edges or shading, no hidden, hidden line, wireframe. And if you change your view display, then the views will update on the sheet. And that shouldn't happen. You should have your view display style set explicitly. Then we have our tangent edge display, hidden line removal for quilts. I can say yes. Uh, that way, if you're displaying in hidden line, it's going to make sure that quilts are not displayed in there. For assemblies, you can hide your skeleton models, which is a good idea. Skeleton models are hypothetical theoretical frameworks for an assembly, so you usually don't need to see them in a production drawing. Hidden line removal for cross hatching. I don't have any cross hatching, so I really don't care about that. Colors come from the drawing or the model, and here's hidden line removal edge display quality. Uh, that one I can say medium. And so, a couple other categories in here origin. By default, the origin of your view is the geometric center of the model. But for some reason, if you wanted to specify the view origin explicitly, you could do that. And that just controls if your view gets bigger, what point on the view is locked down on the drawing. And alignment, if you had another general view and you wanted to line it up with an existing general view, you could do that with the alignment command. But again, I only have this one view so far, so I have nothing to align it to, and I don't even want to align it. So let's click OK to finish off our first view. Right now, my datum planes are being displayed, so I'm going to go to my layers and make sure that my different layers in here are hidden to control the display of the view. And don't forget, if you hide the different layers in here to control your display. Before you save the drawing, be sure to go to View and Save Status so it remembers that. All right, let's repaint. Oh yeah, I have one other uh, datum plane that is explicitly shown because I'm going to use that in a moment. So now I have my first view created. I get a note for my custom scale. I can grab it and reposition it. So now that I have my first view, I can create some views that are projected off of this. And to do that, you can go to the Layout tab and you can choose to create a projection view. You'll notice the other different kinds of view types are available now. Uh, but let's just select it. And from the mini toolbar, you have a command that, oh, that's not that one. Uh, this one over here allows you to create projection views. So let's click on it. And if I move my mouse above the model, I'll get a top view. Move it below, I'll get a bottom view. Move it to the left, I'll get a left view. Let's create a right view over here. That is good. And let's do that one more time. Let's select this view over here. Create a projection view for my top view. And you'll notice that I have different drag handles. And when I go to move this, it only allows it to move up and down because it is projected off of this view over here. And by the way, if you right mouse click and hold, you can lock view movement down to prevent people from moving different views if you want. But I don't have that turned on, so that way I can move this view. And you'll notice that when I move my general view, the other views based off of it will move as well. Again, then when I'm happy, let's lock view movement down, and that way they are positioned where I want them to be. All right, so I do have an angled edge off of here, so I can create an auxiliary view. Let's create auxiliary view, and then pick this angled edge as it's prompting me to do, and then translate off over here. And so there we get a view that is translated and then rotated 90 degrees so I could see that face direct on if I wanted to annotate it with some different dimensions. And let's right click and choose to go to the properties of the view. I'm going to call this view, let's call this view D. Probably change the other ones to A, B, C, and D. Oops. There we go. View D, auxiliary view. And the reason that I'm doing that, changing the name, is that I'm going to add arrows in here. 
And that way you see the arrows pointing onto that face indicating view D. Let's click and drag them uh, to position where I want them. And you can also change how wide they are pointing out over there if they are interfering with something else. So that's good for my auxiliary view. Let's change the properties for one of the other views because I wanted to show you how you could do a half view. So click on the view, go to the properties icon in the mini toolbar. And for visible area over here, I can change from full view. Half view doesn't necessarily mean exactly half the model. It's just one side or the other side of a surface or a datum plane. And so for the half view, let's select. There we go. Datum plane C. And then you can flip which side that you want to keep. Let's keep the side over on the left. And I'll click the apply button. And there you see that we have a half view in there. Similarly, I can create a partial view. Let's say I don't want to see this entire view over here. Let's click on it, go to properties, and for visible area, change from full view to partial view. And you're going to click some reference point and then use a bunch of left clicks to define a spline for how much that you want to see. And then you can middle mouse button to close off the spline. Click apply, and that way we're only seeing a partial view. And here we have the option to show the spline boundary on the view, but you can turn that off. Click the apply button and then OK. And now we just have the partial view over here. And the next kind of view that I'm going to create is going to be a detailed view. So let's say that I've got this area over here and I want to call out someone's attention to it. So to create a detailed view, click on the icon. Now we're going to click a center point just like I did for the partial view and do a bunch of left mouse clicks to define the area. Middle mouse button to close it off and I am automatically getting a note in there which I will reposition. Now it's prompt me to pick where I want this view to be located on the sheet. And by default, the scale of your detailed view is going to be twice as big as the view before it. Let's right click and unlock view movement, reposition it over here, and let's grab the note and Just having some trouble. There we go. Move the note so it's no longer on top of my revision block. And so here, this view is called Detail A over here. Uh, that is good. I can change the name of the view, go to the properties. Maybe I want this to be called View E. And click OK and the note automatically updated. So that is how you can create your general views, projection views, detailed views, and auxiliary views on the drawing. There is another kind of view that you can create that's called a revolve view. Actually, let's do this. Let's create another sheet because I'm getting a little cluttered in here. And new sheet. Before we create the revolve view, let's create a general view. And so I will right click and choose general view. No combined state. Let's locate it about over here. And I will use a front view. And for the scale, let's change it to that 0.25 that we used on sheet number one. So now click OK and there we have it. For the revolved view, it's going to prompt me to select a parent view and then a center point. And if I locate it over here, you'll notice that it uses cross section A and then it rotates it uh, and translates it. So again, I've never used a revolve view. If you have applications for it, uh, please let me know in the comments section. And last thing before the end of this video, I mentioned DTL settings. If you go to file and then prepare drawing properties, then click the blue change hyperlink for detail options. Here are the different options that control 
the detail items in the drawing. And in my files, I have model display for new views set to no hidden by default instead of the default value of follow environment. And after you set your different options in here, you can save your DTL settings under whatever name that you want to use it. And then if you go to file options and configuration, configuration editor, you have your drawing setup file that can be set to the name of the .dtl, the name and path of the .dtl file that you have set up for your own configuration of drawings. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.